I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to talk about how there is a complete and utter lack of centralized listing services for property and real estate, like an MLS, a multiple listing service, as they use in North America here in Nicaragua and the ramifications of lacking that mechanism and what that means for you when it comes to looking at real estate here in Nicaragua. We're going to get to that and a little bit of time with the dog right after the bump. Before we dive into today's topic, we have a quick little bit of advice I have for playing with your dog here under the hikaro trees. If you're here in Nicaragua and you have dogs, you don't need to get a ball, just find a hikaro tree. These are what fall off all year long and the dogs love them. When most people come to Nicaragua and are starting to look at real estate, whether rental or purchase, one of the first things that everybody notices is that there's no way to look up the properties that you may be interested in. Of course, they know that if you go to a real estate website or, or Encuentra 24 or something like that, that there is some amount of things listed online, but it's, it's very few and that the same things tend to be listed in all those places. And clearly they're coming from the same source, often something like Facebook Marketplace. If you actually start trying to dig in further and figure out what is the actual range of options that may be available in the country, it takes very little time to discover that there is no MLS or multiple listing service as they have in North America. The MLS is a group of services that combine together and give essentially an entire picture of the real estate market, both currently and historically, all from a central mechanism that allows you to do searches and research, uh, but is in an enclosed system and not open to the public. So only people who are members of certain organizations have access to that database. But that database is essentially all inclusive. It's starting to lose its grip on the total market, but it does have an awful lot of information. Alternatively, there are services like Trulia and Zillow that have been around now for quite some time that provide a much more modern and complete view of the market, both historical and projected, and is available to the public. And these have broadened the idea of being able to look online and do tons of research about different buildings and, and history and, and comps and all kinds of things, but have also started to break that stranglehold that the MLS services have. So if you're coming from the United States, especially or Canada or a lot of other uh, countries, there is a, a history, a uh, expectation that you're going to have these types of services and probably not just one, but competing services that allow both you and real estate agents to go and do a lot of research, to pull a lot of definitive information and to know a lot of things about the market really quickly. But here in Nicaragua, we don't have anything of the sort, neither an MLS nor a Zillow, for example. We don't have anything. All we have is word of mouth and people sharing information and hearsay. And that's one of the most important things. You, those other services work either with the MLS through what is essentially a monopoly that they have through their agent network of the National Association of Realtors that allows them to collect data and disseminate data uh, between their members in a relatively complete way. It's not absolutely complete, but it is relatively complete. And of course, the MLS systems have access to public systems. So any public records that may exist are also available. And the public record system in the United States is surprisingly complete, as it is in many Western European countries, for example. But here in Nicaragua, the government does not have those central systems. Uh, and so there isn't a central mechanism to pull everything from. Not only does the government not have a simple central system that allows you to look up all the information from everywhere all at once, that alone would be super useful, but also a lot of transactions are not reported to the government, or at least not in their entirety. And that means that a lot of the information that the government has, and they know this, so they're not working from it in a confused way, but a lot of the information that is available to the government is not complete. And that leaves the government often providing a set of information that might as well be useless. It's really useful if the thing you need to do is check on a deed and make sure that it is free and clear, make sure you know who the actual owner is and things like that, maybe discovering what the exact lot lines are. Uh, technical details about a property are generally available. But to begin to get an estimate of what a property's value is, what it has sold for in the past, and its complete history and, and, val and valuation throughout time, is all but impossible. In fact, it probably is impossible because no one having access to information is ever sure 
when it is complete. And of course, in the United States, there's always a possibility of something being incorrect, but the percentage of properties that have incorrect information recorded with the government is extremely low, so low that we never really even consider that that is a possibility while we know it could happen. But here in Nicaragua, you assume that properties, at least those over any minimal value, almost certainly are being bought and sold with only partial records going to the government. And this means that the bulk of the information, and not just over 50%, but probably over 70 or 80%, maybe even higher, of those records recorded with the government, that's what you do with records is record them, is uh, potentially misleading, whether it's just partial or completely incorrect. And of course, there are some things that are not registered with the government. Sometimes the lot lines, as are put in there, are inaccurate, and you have to get a surveyor and do a bunch of things to make sure that your uh, ducks are in a row if you're going to buy or sell property. So you need to be aware those are processes that people understand. That's why you get a lawyer. That's fine. Like there are ways to deal with that. And you don't need to really worry that things are incorrect because you shouldn't be just pulling records from the government and working from that blindly. But the amount of information that you're able to pull through automated mechanisms that can just go to the government, pull all the records and provide a complete picture of what the nation has looked like, even just historically, ignoring anything that's on the market today, that's a different animal. But just providing historical records as to what has been on the market in the past, what it sold for, when it sold, those kinds of things, they are essentially unavailable. So even a historical picture really can't be built up. So when we're here looking at how do we start accumulating information about the real estate market, that information has not been collected yet. So we're at a before the starting point position on information here in the market. Now, as far as putting together a, a uh, MLS or a Zillow or something of that nature to show what is available currently, this is different in, even in the United States. The government doesn't record this information and the idea of what is for sale is a little bit of a, a gray area, of course, because someone could be willing to sell their house and not have it listed anywhere. Maybe they've put a sign out front. Maybe they haven't even done that. Maybe they mentioned it to a friend. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they are listening for people to mention that they're looking for a house in the area. Maybe they're not. Maybe they've contacted a real estate agent. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they've who knows, right? There's all these different things that they may or may not have done. And at the end of the day, sometimes a house is for sale simply because someone would, would be willing to entertain an offer if one is made to them. And of course, this is true in the United States as well. But the U.S. has such really good known processes for getting your house listed, whether on Zillow or by a real estate agent into the MLS and those things, that basically any house that would entertain an offer is online, unless you're getting into that really, really last tier of people who are just like, well, if someone offers me dramatically over market, I would would sell. But of the houses that I've sold, the first house that I ever did, which was my house in Geneseo, New York, the one is directly behind my father's current apartment, is one that my wife and I had held. Some people knew that we weren't living there full time. We had moved into the city, into New York City, and we're living down there, and we were only using the house on weekends. So when someone in the neighborhood was looking for a specific type of house, and ours was the only one known to exist on the market in within a few blocks, it was a very small area, uh, that was very specifically what they needed, which was a two-bedroom room one floor with no stairs house. Our house worked very perfectly for an elderly woman who needed a, a place where she could convalesce a little bit for a number of years. And so her son reached out to us, said, hey, I heard you're not really using the house that much. And they offered us dramatically over market because it was the one house that they wanted. And it was a downsize from where she was coming from. So she was easily able to pay a little bit extra for it. And we said, well, we hadn't really thought about selling it. We love the house, but... <clears throat> for a house that we weren't living in, uh, that we were basically just using for storage that, uh, you know, we were going to get above market on, we really couldn't turn it down. It just made financial sense. So we ended up selling that house. Uh, but, and that is, that's a real way that houses sell. So even in the United States, right, this is a process that people really do follow. In my own experience, it's been a major portion of my real estate adventures in the U.S. Here in Nicaragua, that kind of stuff happens even more. And that is a real part of the process. So you may be thinking that, well, yes, in the United States, in Canada, there's this really off chance that I could just approach someone whose house is in the spot that I like, seems like a house that I like, that I've heard maybe they, they could use a different house, but they're not actually thinking about selling. And maybe I could talk them into it. Well, here in Nicaragua, take that up 10 times. It is much more likely that that would be a process you would follow. But as far as when the public goes out and is intending to sell a house, 
in the US, it's very straightforward. You're going to do one of these things, you're going to get it listed somewhere online so that people can find you. That's so obvious. And there's really no way to sell a house if you don't do that. If you don't, people would say that's not really for sale. Like, how can you even call it for sale if you're not at least listing it on the free services like Zillow? But here in Nicaragua, since there is nothing like that, there's no centralized service and people don't expect to find houses through Facebook Marketplace or Encuentro 24 or anything like that, tons of houses that are actively hoping to sell are not listed in any service that you're going to be able to find or any service at all, very potentially. And so that's very different. It's not centralized. It's not standardized. And the systems that exist in Country 24, Facebook Marketplace, and all those things, they don't have the search capabilities. They don't have the research capabilities that we expect to have with a Zillow or a multiple listing service. So with, with Zillow, for example, you can look up a location by map and, and learn about a place while looking at a map and combining real estate data with that location. With the multiple listing services, you can do searches on similar types of houses. Maybe it's the same number of bedrooms or similar square footage. And and maybe within a zip code. There's a lot of things you can do to use those services to find out a lot about the house you're looking at, houses in the area, what's happened historically, what other people are asking currently, and combine that information to make some pretty good decisions. But with Nicaragua's market, we simply don't have any of those things. And so even if you go onto Facebook Marketplace and you do find one house, it's just a house just being listed randomly. There's no reasonable way for you to find houses in the area, houses historically, houses specifically, houses that share certain details. None of that is, it's not a real estate system. It's not storing that kind of information in a, uh, a mechanism that has metadata that allows you to really search on features to understand aspects of the house. It's all just description. Anything you're going to do, you have to do manually. While the lack of listing services may feel like a nuisance if you're coming to Nicaragua and it could make looking for houses a little bit harder doing your research a little bit more challenging, it's much more important than that. In the United States, the concept of being a real estate agent actually hinges on having access to listing services that are kept from the general public. Without this, there's really no reason to ever talk to a real estate agent. They don't provide any value on their own, not any significant value. Their value comes from being a member of an organization with private access to monopolistic real estate listing services. And without that, the real estate agent is actually in the way of your process of looking for and evaluating a home. If you had access to the MLS, you could easily and very rapidly at any time, day or night, look up all the information you possibly could want, do all your own research, do your own comparisons, think about things that are meaningful to you, not just meaningful to other people, find houses that you're interested in looking at, contact the right people, go out and see them all in minutes. You would never have to do, have those co complicated conversations where you try to explain to a third party what you're actually looking for. You don't have to trust that a person who doesn't really know you very well is going to suddenly understand your desires and go find you a property that matches things that you couldn't possibly articulate. You don't have to worry about wanting to do research in the middle of the night or someone being busy and not being able to get back to you or showing you houses that they really want to sell and are just not right for you in any way. And when I went out to buy a house, we spent so much time when we were looking in Texas, for example, constantly looking at houses that were so poorly suited for us, it made no sense whatsoever. And yet when we found one that was absolutely perfect and we fell in love with the house and ultimately bought it and my children were raised there and my children still say that they really miss that house and even talk about maybe having the plans drawn up so they could recreate the house here in Nicaragua. Believe it or not, they've actually said that. Uh, that house, when our real estate agent saw it, she said, no, that, that's a terrible house. I don't want to even show it to you. There's no way you'll be interested in it. We walked in the door and we took it that same day. It was magic. We walked in and it was exactly what we had been looking for. She had no idea. She was completely unable to picture the things that mattered to us. That wasn't her fault. This is just a challenge with real estate. A real estate agent doesn't know which house is going to make you fall in love with it. They don't know which living room is going to just seem like the comfortable place, which light is going to make you happy, which bedroom is going to have just that vibe that you're good to live with and how you may use the house. Well, maybe you'll put an office here. Oh, but this completely different configuration, I'm willing to do something completely different based on who knows. There's so, so many different ways that people use houses. And that's a challenge that just generally the real estate market where people are out selling houses and don't know you and don't have your vision and don't know everything that could happen with your family is going to have. Like, there's just no good way to make that work. Houses are a very personal thing and it just makes sense for people to look at a lot of outsides, insides, locations, times of year, and put together a 
how could we live in this place or that place? And as someone who grew up in the country but has lived in huge cities, has lived in the suburbs, I've you know, in small villages, each of those places, my lifestyle is different. And in any given moment, you could offer me a beautiful place in the country. I was a couple years ago, I was in Guatemala and there was a farmhouse that I ended up staying at and it was such an amazing experience. I could totally see myself being talked into purchasing a Guatemalan farmhouse. But alternatively, I'm most likely to buy a high rise apartment in Guatemala. Those are two very different approaches, but those are the places that I really, really liked when I was there. All the places that other people were really excited about city houses or places in big villages, none of those caught my attention because it's just a personal thing, right? Everyone has a different connection to different types of places and different scenarios that you might live in. And so it's very difficult to articulate those things to a real estate agent. Having access directly to listing services and Zillow and those types of things make a huge difference. So if you had access to them, you would essentially never want to engage a real estate agent, even in the United States. You would simply engage a lawyer, cut the middleman out, spend a lot less getting a house, get more for your money, the lower, the whole market would come down and people would buy and sell houses much more rapidly and all the people who work in real estate can go find a different line of work to do. Well, here in Nicaragua, we don't have those things. The real estate agents, where they exist, don't have access to the tools that make real estate agents make sense. And so it's important to understand the underpinnings of the real estate market don't exist here at least not at this time. And one did try to make an MLS service not too long ago and it failed. They were run out of uh, the market. They felt that they were threatened and it was dangerous for them to do so. And so they gave up uh, and ultimately, I believe, left the country, but definitely left the market, if nothing else. And so even an attempt to do it here, which let's be honest, it wasn't a real strong attempt. I don't know how much effort was really put into it. Uh, it is actually something that takes a bit of uh, <laughs> investment and know-how and it, it isn't a casual thing. Uh, and so this falls into a story category of both. This is why real estate is the way that it is, but also this is a bit of why so many businesses don't do well in Nicaragua. People just feel so empowered to do things that make no sense and think they can get away without doing their due diligence or having the know-how and the skills and the experience that you would have to have in any other market. But of course, that doesn't make it easier to do business here. It makes it actually harder. This is a market that is less forgiving. So you really need to know what you're doing. Whereas in the United States, there's so much business to be had there's a certain amount of leeway for doing things really poorly and you'll probably be able to squeak by but definitely not in Nicaragua so that's actually probably a bigger reason why they failed but they felt that their failure made them feel uncomfortable that they weren't safe to stay in the country so whether or not that was true that is the way they were feeling and that is the only attempt we've seen at anyone even talking about something like an MLS they also got threatened directly that they would be sued for trying to do anything like it because the entire concept supposedly of having a list and listing service was owned by uh you know organizations in the United States and that people outside you know their their group or whatever were never allowed to accumulate real estate information like the, the concept of information was owned by them which of course makes no sense but uh they had they had not done their their due diligence to make that something that they were able to do that they felt they were able to do safely so all of that comes down to when you're coming to look in nicaragua for real estate and this is a great place to look at real estate don't expect that you're going to find anything like that but also don't expect that all of the mechanisms that you're used to in north america that depend on those things are still going to exist. And I realize that most people don't sit around thinking about why do real estate agents exist? Why do things work the way that they do in North America for real estate? But under the hood, the majority of the aspects of what makes the North American market the North American market is the multiple listing services and other databases that pull together large amounts of information and provide it with relatively little friction either to home buyers or to home sellers or to real estate agents. Everything about the North American home buying experience is one that is flush with data. Every aspect of the act of the entire process of all activities having to do with real estate is full of data about selling, data about growth, data about projections, data about uh, mortgages, data about bank rates, data about real estate agents, everything. It's so much data. That is how the U.S. operates. And that's fantastic for a lot of reasons. Here in Nicaragua, expect none of that data to be there and, all, and take time to think about 
all the things that that's going to imply. It means you can't go look things up online. You can't get a bunch of information quickly. You can't look from abroad. You can't hire someone to show you what they have access to because they don't have access to anything you don't have access to. You need to completely change your thought processes, but this is why. And by understanding that this underlying database that powers all the mechanisms you're used to is gone, all those mechanisms that depend on it are gone as well. Or if they exist, they exist in such a way that they lack their value and are being presented to you and being offered to you only based on the hope that you won't realize that this is a different market and not understand why they can't have any value, no matter what you hope they would have, no matter how much they wish they had access to these things. These things don't exist, and so they're unable to create the value you're looking for. They're unable to repeat the processes that you're used to in North America, at least not with any rate of success. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, tell your friends about the show, share on social media. I've made a new group for real estate episodes so that hopefully you can kind of go through them one by one and accumulate kind of a master's degree in real estate in Nicaragua, put it all together in one spot. Share on social media if you would. Every post that you put online helps some new person discover our channel here. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And just to make things really handy for you, we've popped four videos up on the screen. If you could just pick one at random or choose one that looks interesting to you, I'd really appreciate it.